All right. So this is uh, something that Im impacts everyone because uh, almost everybody here, if not everybody here, uh, drives. I mean, I think we live in a country where we we need um, transportation because we don't have, unless you live in a major city that has subways and buses and you know things like this available all the time, uh, we need to drive. And at least at Dutchess County, we do have the loop, um, but it might drive you loopy waiting for the loop. So in many cases, we are going to be driving. And if you're driving, um, you need to make sure you have insurance because you are basically liable for anything that happens um, that you cause or you're part of. You might be at fault in some way, shape or form. So auto policy, auto coverage, uh, there are minimum requirements in every state. New York State has its minimum requirements. Um, but there's a lot to it that's important to sort of understand. Uh, your book goes through four different parts, uh, liability, uh, coverage, medical payments, uh, coverage uninsured motorist, and damage. Okay, which is property. So we're going to take a look at these and we'll sort of expand uh, as we need to. I have some other things to show you. So again, uh, I would think it's liability coverage is required in almost all states. Uh, here in the slide says most states. I don't know the states that don't have it, but you never know. Uh, for sure, New York does. All of New England and Northeast do have liability coverage required. So what does it cover? Well, it covers bodily injury. Um, this is probably the most important aspect to it. Uh, it also covers uh, property damages when you, to others, by the way, when you're responsible for the loss, okay? Um, you're deemed responsible oftentimes if you're not following the, uh, the rules you learn during your driving. Uh, uh, lessons in your driving test. So for example, if you are involved in an accident where you are taking a left turn, right? So anybody who needs to take a left turn has to go in front of one lane of traffic moving in the opposite direction to join the second lane that's going right left. So in essence, if you cause an accident with a left turn, I would say 99.9% .9 of the time you are at fault because you had to cross over into where other people had a right of way. And, uh, and if you caused an accident by getting in other people's right of way, it's your fault. And so it's, you know, based on how an accident occurs, it's relatively... <clears throat> I don't want to say simple, but it's there's, there's a pretty high probability that they can figure out who's at fault just by knowing the details of the accident. Okay. And one of the first things they look at is the issue of right of way. Who had the right of way in this situation? And the other, if the other party interfered in the right of way, that's the cause of the accident. And thus, if it's the cause of the accident, you're responsible for it. Um, and so that's one of the most important types of things. We're going to look at a policy to, to look at the specific coverages here. Um, but just to understand that this is super important, super important. And again, following those rules, the road. Um, in, in New York state, um, the, lim the, the required policy in order for you to even uh, get in a car and drive is something called, um, is 2550.10, which basically these are the limits um, that, are, that are covered. And so, as you see, you can choose, you can choose what your limits are for, for the liability uh, policy for part A. Again, the, the minimum that's required is 2550, uh, 2550 and 10, which means uh, as we'll get into it, if you get into an accident, 
twenty-five thousand uh, dollars would be the the amount of money that you would be covered um, for bodily injury to some other person. Fifty thousand is the total for all the parties involved in the accident to, uh, to coverage that injury. And the last number is property damage. If you wrecked someone else's car, that's the last limit. So we're going to look at those limits and how they're split and what's really decent coverage and what's not enough coverage. Um, and of course, the wonderful thing about these is, uh, yes, other people sometimes just take the bare minimum because they're thinking about it as money. It's a waste of money. I'm not going to get into an accident, what have you. Uh, you don't have to think like they do, but that's a risk that's out there. The best way to cover it is to make sure that you're covered in full in case some other person might hit you and not have coverage. That's uh, reasonable. So this is important. You have options. You have options. So uh, who is insured? Uh, the insured person. So whoever's named. Um, sometimes policies need to are required to actually list the family members' names on the policy. Some policies uh, automatically cover certain members of the, of the family who are in the household who have access to use of the car. Um, but that's one of the things that are inter interesting to look into, you know. And um, because in some states, if the person is not specifically listed on the policy, they're not covered, even if they're a family member who used the car. And what exactly is insured is, you know, what vehicle is specifically insured. So what person is insured and what vehicle is insured is a big part of understanding that. We are actually going to be looking at something called a declarations page so you can see the details of what a policy would look like. Okay. Um, if you use a, um, uh, a, a rental uh, temporary vehicle, then as long as you have uh, these types of insurance coverages um, and you are driving that rental, it, it should be covered in the most policies. Okay. All right, Medi Part B medical payments here is basically, again, specifically uh, medical related expenses from, from an accident that happened. Okay. Uh, it does cover uh, it does cover everyone uh, who is in the car. So you, if you are the one who was driving, uh, family members or other passengers are covered under the medical payments. Um, it also covers injuries if you hit a pedestrian or someone on a bicycle. Um, that's, that's also uh, covered under this particular insurance. This is one of the more important things, and you know I had a discussion board question for you to do on this because it's, it's just critically important to understand. There are a lot of people who are driving out there who don't have insurance or who don't have enough insurance to cover any damages really to you as a person or to your vehicle if, they, uh, if you had the unfortunate and unpleasant uh, experience of bumping into them literally and figuratively. Um, so one of those types of things is to make sure that you make sure you get this additional coverage. It's not required in most states. Um, it's, uh, it's something that's additional coverage. There may be some states that require a minimum amount, uh, but those minimums often do not really matter to, up to much. Again, bodily injury can be a fortune. Uh, and I think that's one of the most important types of things. Um, again, if you had uh, someone who, you know, you got hit by someone with no insurance, this portion covers you. Or in the case of a hit and run, this portion covers you. So it's a very, very important uh, type of, of insurance to, uh, to understand. And then of course, there's a lot of other insurances for physical damage, like collision uh, and comprehensive policy. Um, and we'll look at those in more detail, but 
Uh, again, uh, collision, you don't want limited collision. There's some insurance um, that allows you to, to do a limited collision policy coverage for less money. Well, you can, you have to prove in order for that policy to kick in, you have to prove you weren't at fault for the physical damage. Why go through the extra stuff? I mean, it's, again, they're looking at an accident and they're determining a lot of things by the, the details of the accident, regardless what your story is. You know, if you took a left turn, for example, uh, in, in, in traffic uh, and, and, and an accident occurred, 99.9% .9 of the time, it's gonna be your, it's gonna be the fault of the driver who took the left turn. Um, so, you know, and the same thing of a right turn on red, I mean, the, the, the folks who are already on that road uh, who have the green light have the right of way, just because we can turn right on red doesn't mean in one way, shape or form that we can't cause an accident. We have to make sure it's safe, the safety issue. Um, collisions not required, uh, believe it or not, uh, it would be required if you just bought a car um, and the and you got a loan uh, and so the lender wants the car covered so you don't walk away from it in case it does have a lot of physical damage. They want their money um, when they give you the loan. So, the, so lenders can require you to have loans, um, to have coverage, collision coverage if there's a loan on the car. Uh, leased cars as well require you to have collision coverage as well because they own the car. Technically, you're borrowing, you're renting the car, but they own it. So they're going to require you to have certain coverage. Um, but technically speaking, the state, uh, most states don't require it. Okay. Um, right. Well, if you have an older car, you don't have any loans on that car. Um, this really, and, and the car is not valued very highly. Um, then collisions, you know, you might be able to live without it, without much of a, much of a problem. Um, and the other thing is protecting against other types of losses. Um, so, you know, hail doesn't happen a lot in this uh, area, um, thank God. Uh, but if it does happen, you know, it's just, hail is just balls of ice, you know, that are formed up in the atmosphere and when they pelt down on, uh, on the earth, it does damage, right? You can have a lot of car damage, your windows can break. Um, hail, if it's big enough, can put dents in your uh, roof and hood and trunk area. I mean, it's, it can be quite bad. If you don't have comprehensive uh, insurance as part of your auto policy, uh, you're gonna be living with a lot of dents if you live in an area that has a lot of hail. Again, again, hail you, doesn't occur a lot here. We have it, we have it um, on occasion, but it doesn't occur a lot here. Certainly fire, you know, uh, it's unlikely your car is just going to just decide to burst into flame at any particular moment, but, um, but it can, you know, there's a lot of other types of wildfires, other types of things. Uh, if your neighbor's tree falls on your car uh, because they're, they're, Maybe it's in a windstorm and the tree got knocked down and it happens it happened to fall on your car and in, in, in your property or whatnot. Um, you know, it's important to have coverage for those types of things. And of course, we do have more powerful storms. So one thing that we do know is we we are having a lot more powerful storms in our area than we had before over the years and comes with a lot of wind, a lot of damage from flying and other objects uh, that fall. So this is an important coverage, I would say, um, compared to, you know, the chances of hail are, are smaller, but certainly the chance of wind and something falling on your car uh, from the powerful storm tree houses is higher. And of course, there's always that good old thing, that theft, you know, that people's car gets stolen. Um, so these are the types of perils that are covered under a uh, comprehensive uh, policy. And we have a question here. Yes, they cover deer. Yeah, oh dear. My, oh my. Um, yeah, I, I got hit with, I mean, I didn't get, I got hit by a deer. I always say they, they hit me, I didn't hit them. Uh, as a matter of fact, this is something you have to, and. Insurance companies are so weird. 
on this because again, they're they're they want to make sure that they are paying for the things that they have covered. So check this out, Angelina. If a deer runs in front of you, because I, I mean, it's actually now we got we're going to get to November and December. Uh, that's their running season. So basically, their November and December is when they all go into heat, and so they're they're sort of running uh, around all the time, you know, because it's that time of their reproductive season for them. And so, uh, yeah, I got hit. The deer came out of nowhere, hit the side of my car. Uh, I think probably a good five years ago. And uh, you know, it's it just happened so quickly, and that's what happens now. Um, they paid for it, and it is under comprehensive. It is it is one of those types of things. But let's say the deer ran out, and I actually saw it, and I tried to swerve to miss it, <laughs> but I still hit it. <laughs> Well, they're gonna, they might say it's my fault. Uh, oh, so you actually saw the deer? You mean you could have avoided it? You know, I mean, these are the types of things that insurance companies look at when they look at probability and risk. Uh, they say, hang on, so you saw it, you, but you still hit it, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, so, you know, I hate to say this as a general rule, but, you know, it's better, statistically speaking, to have this coverage and just continue to go straight on the road. Of course, you don't want to you don't want to hit a deer if you don't have to. But swerving um, gives the insurance company reason to doubt to some degree that that the accident could have been avoided. You know, and so you don't want to have that kind of happen. It's it's just sort of better to just keep the car straight. Um, you know, if it's unavoidable. So I, I, I don't want to sound horrible when I say that, but I think that from a business perspective, when they're analyzing all these things, that's certainly one of the things they think about, you know, uh, because they're trying their best to not pay the claim if there's reason not to pay the claim. And if you give them that reason, um, they might use that against you. So it's just better just to, I hate to say it, but just, it's too late. Um, yeah, oh dear. And there's a lot of deer. I mean, you know, we, we've gotten rid of uh, predators. You know, there's, there's not a lot of wolves or coyotes or other types of things around like there used to be, which naturally eat things like deer. So you have the deer population that's exploded over the years, and there's just a lot more deer hitting automobiles uh, and automobiles hitting deer. So um, it's a sad part of our life, but we have to be careful, of course, when we're driving, um, because again, they, they can come out of nowhere. They really can come out of nowhere. And again, November and December is the high month because they're, they're running around uh, wanting to mate. It's their running season. So how much fun is that? Um, most of the time for auto insurance, you, you want to make sure that it's all no fault insurance, which means that you don't have to prove it was the other person's fault to get paid on the claim, or you don't have to prove it wasn't your fault for your claim to be uh, paid. Um, when you start getting these limited coverages, that you have to prove fault uh, or no fault in this case. Um, you know, it just, it's just, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. So no, no fault insurance, basically the insurance will cover all of those perils regardless how they happen. Um, so they're not gonna be looking for negligence, uh, et cetera, okay. But no fault insurance also restricts, uh, you know, pain and suffering types of things. Uh, so if you if if you have if if you it's, if it's possible that you can act, you actually did a lot more damage, uh, or a lot more damage was done to you. Uh, sometimes these policies somewhat restrict how much the payment would be for pain and suffering, whereas. 
in some cases, a court uh, might award you a lot larger um, uh, type of settlement, but the insurance companies are going to uh, restrict that to a certain level. There are maximums. So, uh, and again, insurance is, is uh, regulated by the state. So states regulate insurance and, uh, uh, and all the stuff that happens there. So make sure you check with the state to see if the insurance company is, is good. Uh, how much you actually pay for your insurance is, is subject of uh, both statistical fact and debate uh, because there are issues of discrimination that happen naturally when you're looking at some of these factors. For example, uh, where you live um, and, and the crime statistics that are associated with where you live. So in other words, if you live in a neighborhood uh, that's relatively well off, that uh, crime is very low, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Everyone has a garage, so your car is not going to get stolen uh, as frequently as leaving in the street. Uh, you can, I mean, that's a low risk territory. And if it's a low risk territory uh, and it's a lower risk for the insurance company, they're going to lower the price for those policies in those areas. However, if you're in the city, uh, particularly in certain areas of the city where crime is very high, there's a lot of property damage. There's a lot of stolen vehicles, things like this. Well, that rating, that territory is going to be rated risky. And if it's a risky territory, uh, there it's going to come with a higher premium, a higher price for the, for the policy. Sadly, and when I say by how it's discriminatory, is many of the folks who live in these territories do tend to be lower income, they tend to be much more um, uh, uh, the population tends to be a higher percentage of black, Hispanic, uh, and, and lower income uh, white folks. So, but it can, in essence, be somewhat discriminatory because it's not necessarily their fault that they live in an area that's, that's ravaged with uh, these issues. So it does bring about the question of, is it discriminatory um, to have, uh, to charge people in these areas because they live there. Um, so it's, it, but it is something, it's a risk that insurance companies look at. And again, all the insurance companies are looking at are factors that increase the risk. If it increased the risk for them, they're charging you more. Um, how often you, you know, how frequently do you use the car? So if you are using it all day, then uh, there's a higher risk of you getting into an accident, something bad happening. If you only use it uh, to go to the store and back and you're basically a homebody, well, there's less risk. You're not gonna put that many miles on the car. There's less risk for damage. Um, but if you're, out, like I said, if you're driving all the time and you have a long commute to work and back and use your car for everything, uh, even to go visit your next door neighbor. Uh, that higher usage means it's a more risk that something bad will happen and they're gonna charge you a higher fee for that because that's one of the factors they look at. Uh, this is also interesting. They actually look at your particular characteristics. Now, again, some of these can be considered somewhat discriminatory uh, based on how you look at it. So, for example, I think I was telling you men are more aggressive than women behind the wheel uh, of a car. And so just, just being a male increases the risk of an accident happening. Um, and so men tend to have in general higher premiums than, than women. Uh, it's worse for younger drivers. If you are a younger driver, uh, it's even worse than if you're older. A lot of people say, well, the worst drivers are, are older drivers, actually. Uh, not based on the, the risk factors that insurance companies look at. Matter of fact, when insurance companies look at the risk factors, they see older drivers having significantly less accidents um, and taking less risks that make accidents happen. 
So they actually look at older drivers as much safer drivers. The problem with insurance companies is when they look at younger drivers, they see a lot of risky behaviors. And particularly when you just got your license to when your brain is fully developed at age 25. Um, you might not know, you might think you're, you've stopped growing and in many of cases you have. I mean, you, you're, you might not get any taller, you know, once you're hit 18, 19, you're probably, you're probably done growing in that sense, but your brain is still developing until 25 is when it actually finishes its development. It's a very long process. So what happens between 16, 17, when you get your license for the first time in 25 is you are taking risks that other people would not take. And again, if particularly if you're a male, uh, but that's true across the board for younger people. So you're at a corner, you want to take a left turn, and there's a huge truck coming. And, you know, in many cases, an older person would say, okay, I'll wait for the truck to pass, and then I'll go. A younger person might say, I can beat that truck. Let me just, you know, I can pull it. Um, that is an increase of risk. You know, it might be fun to do. It might be crazy. I don't know. It sounds more crazy than fun. Um, but there are thrill seekers among us. And so that happens. Unfortunately, it increases the risk. Uh, and so your age, believe it or not, other characteristics like your credit score affects this. Because if you are reckless with your credit, you're probably reckless with other areas of your life. This is how they see it. Again, their, their purpose as a business is to look at risk factors. So they're looking at all these things as risk factors. So if you're uh, if you're risky to take a, to have a loan, <laughs> and that's what your credit score would tell, right? How risky you are to lend money to. Chances are you're also risky in these other areas of your life, and that would include driving. And uh, and if you're not if you're not paying attention and negligent on not paying a loan back, you're you're very likely to be negligent in these other areas of life. And so they look at that as increased risk. Increased risk means higher premiums for, for your car insurance, for example. Um, the type of automobile is one of those types of things too. There's just some automobiles are more likely to get stolen uh, than others. Um, it, it seems to be a target, you know. Um, some uh, cars are more uh, susceptible to damage than others. Uh, so it really sort of depends. The, the type of automobile is going to uh, matter. If you're in a sports car that goes really, really fast versus a, a hybrid that can barely you know, get off the ground, uh, there's a more risk with, with speed. Uh, more uh, accidents occur related to speed than anything else. And so um, cars that are known to be fast cars, sports cars, other types of cars, uh, that have heavy engines and can go super duper fast, um, risky to an insurance company. And they'll put that as a factor. I don't think no one's gonna be, you know, drag racing in a, in a smart car. Uh, that wouldn't be smart. Um, but they would if they had, you know, a Mustang and it's all, you know, kind of, you know, pipes out the side, uh, you know, just to show how strong the engine is. So again, the, the companies, insurance companies look at those types of things as risk factors um, as well. And of course, your history, uh, your driving record history, you know, have you had any accidents in the past? How many have you had? I mean, and they look at mostly, you know, your tickets. <laughs> How many tickets have you gotten? Because that also increases the risk. So speeding tickets are are one of those types of things where if you are speeding, there's a lot of research that links um, speeding with, with the, the amount of accidents or the cause of accidents or a factor in an accident. So if you get a lot of speeding tickets, I mean, of course you're, you're at risk of losing your license if you get too many of those. But you know, if you get speeding tickets, uh, that tells the insurance company that your risk factor is increased compared to people that follow the speed limit. Um, so, or if you are driving while you're drunk or high, um, and, and you got pulled over and cited for that. 
So those tickets would show that, okay, well, if you are not fully paying attention to driving, your risk of increasing, your risk increases for having an accident. And thus it increases for the insurance company to pay for that claim. And so you become a, a bigger risk. And so they're gonna charge you more money for your insurance policy. So these are all, this is how the business looks at these types of things. You know, it's, a, it's practical from a business perspective. The factors that increase the risk means that it increases the likelihood that they're gonna to have to pay a claim. Well, they don't wanna pay as many claims as that. They, they wanna limit the amount of claims they pay. So they start looking at these risk factors and charging people more money who are riskier. And to them, that means more likely to pay a claim. Okay. Um, so uh, again, New York has uh, certainly responsibility laws that requires all motorists to buy a minimum amount of insurance. Um, again, you, you can't even get a license plate to register a car without showing that you have proof of insurance, how important it is, right? And of course, uh, you have to show your coverage to, uh, for an accident. So if you get into an accident, one of the first things you do is you, of course, you, in New York, it's different in Massachusetts, where I am originally from. Uh, in New York, you call the police um, and they come and write an act and they write a report on what they see and basically at that point in time like i said if you if you went into another person's right of way and a, an accident happened that's going to show up in the report and uh and so that's that's basically that but again while that's happening you're ex you're uh, exchanging information you're getting the person's, um, you know, license, registration, other types of issues on the car. You're also getting their uh, insurance card or insurance coverage because you want to make sure you've exchanged all that information. You have as much as you can. Never, never trust anyone who says, "Oh yeah, you know, uh, I don't want this to be reported. Uh, it's only a little bit of damage. You know, I'll I'll pay you later. You know, I, I will. We can do this off the record." Bull, bull. Don't do that to yourself. Um, always go through the proper channels because you're, you know, it's not that you're, why do you owe this other person a, a, a favor anyway for hitting you? I mean, you don't owe them anything, number one. Number two, you've assumed a lot of the risk when you agree to that. Because if they don't pay, you can't, I mean, are you going to wait a week or two to report an accident? That's, that's, uh, that's, that's looked at as, as, fraudulent in some cases. Um, so you have to watch how how you are doing these types of things. It's just much better to follow the process as it's outlined because it's safer for you to do it. Okay. So don't cut any deals with anyone who might have hit you. Um, so because you're it's you're just putting yourself at, at risk when you do that. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, there are other types of specialty coverages. Uh, we talked a little bit about this last time. You know, what happens if your car is damaged in a flood, earthquake? These are not included in any policies. Um, you know, you do need, excuse me, you do need special coverage if you have other types of vehicles like an RV, a boat, a mobile home, a motorcycle. <clears throat> they you need uh, a truck even if you drive like a big truck you need specialty insurance to cover that particular form of transportation that you have uh, some people have more than one license uh, because they can drive more than one vehicle you need insurances for all of that type of thing one is not going to transfer to the other okay uh, and then of course that whole liability coverage we talked about uh, last time is important Okay. Uh, again, this is why I already mentioned this was right after an accident. Make sure you get all the information that you can. Uh, if there are any witnesses that you think could be very helpful in this, uh, again, names, addresses, phone numbers, take pictures. Everyone has a phone that has a camera now, how wonderful it is. Pictures of the damage, pictures of the other car, pictures of everything. Um, and don't leave the accident. Call your police, let them write a report, contact your insurance company, say, look, uh, an accident just occurred, you know, uh, that I'm in. Um, they have to be notified as soon as possible, as, to, as soon as possible. When you are dealing with agents, and, and I'll get into this, uh, I'm just gonna stop it here and then go back to this. 
but you you are you know when you deal with insurance agents you're really dealing with insurance agents that either can sell insurance only from the company they work for or you can have an independent insurance agent which actually <clears throat> can sell you uh, policies from multiple insurance companies so just to sort of understand who you're dealing with so if you go to a geico agent or a liberty mutual agent um they're only selling policies for that company you know or progressive for example but if you go to an independent insurance uh agent they can give you quotes for several companies um and and you can sort of look at all that type of thing but let's go i'm going to actually um stop the share here bring us back to our main screen momentarily before i switch over to another uh, screen, but uh, are you okay with some of this stuff already? All right, so I'm going to actually, we're going to go to a couple of different things. I have some policies to show you and this should be it. Okay. Um, well, this is actually, it's, it's interesting how big this is, but fraud happens. This is just another news story here. Um, Auto insurance fraud, insurance fraud in general is a crime. Um, it's a big, big crime. And so uh, in terms of, of a crime, um, let's take a look at, at uh, Priscilla here. So Priscilla of, of Brooklyn was in an accident on July the 14th. She didn't have collision coverage. She added it right after the accident. And then she filed a claim a week later. Um, it's fraud. It's a felony. It's a felony. It's not even a misdemeanor. It's a felony. It's a felony. Um, and so, you know, this is real stuff. This is real legal schmeagle type of stuff. Again, this particular other person from Brooklyn uh, had a car accident in January, added collision service uh, a couple of days later, and then filed a claim right? It's a felony. It's a felony. Don't do it. Okay. This other person in Brooklyn, he let his insurance coverage lapse uh, to discover the, the vehicle was vandalized. Um, he reinstated the insurance policy and then filed the claim, falsely claiming it happened when he already had insurance. That's also a felony. That's also a felony. So there's lots, you know, th there's just a lot of stuff to be aware of. Um, and, and, and I think it's important to know that it, it is a felony. You know, there, there are real penalties for insurance fraud, for insurance fraud. All right, let's go back to our auto uh, declarations page. So here uh, we're looking at the policy for uh, this couple, Melinda Flores and Joe Soto of Arizona. Um, this is their policy number. The policy period tells you exactly when this is in effect. And it's very specific. Uh, it even has an end time. 12.01 <laughs> AM on March 31st, this policy is done, okay? Now, uh, uh, Melinda and Joe Soto have a son, Jacob, who lives with them. But in Arizona, that you have to list everybody on your policy. They did not list Jacob. Um, in New York, I, I, I think we're covered. Uh, I, again, I'm not a licensed agent. Um, and I, it's been a long, long time since I you know, personally dealt with any type of sale of insurance back in the 80s. Um, but there are states that, is, that will allow if someone is living with you and using your car, like your son or daughter, to have that coverage included. Um, there's an assumption. Um, but that's, that's not true in all the states. Arizona's not. So they're excluded. There are the vehicles that are covered. All vehicles have a vehicle identification number. Uh, that's very, very important to know. Your, your car has a special identification number, okay? And this is how your car is looked at by the identification number. 
Uh, the, a lien holder is, in this case, the Toyota Camry has a lien on the uh, credit union has a lien on the car. That means that the Toyota Camry has a loan on it. Bonanza Credit Union are the folks that made the loan on the Camry and it's not paid back. So a lien holder means that, look, before um, Melinda Flores or Joe Soto can actually say this car is theirs, they have to pay the lien holder off. When there's no lien holder, like in the case of the Ford Escape here, they're the true, then, the, then whoever, you know, Joe or Melinda, whoever's on the car, they're the real owner. You know, they're, they're the pure owner, free and clear. Lien holders basically still have a claim to the asset. They still have a legal claim to the asset because there's a loan. So here's a uh, vehicle number one is the Camry. Um, and look at the uh, look at the liability coverage here. 20, uh, 250, 550. So it's 20, 250, 550 is, is the limit. Basically, you know, $250,000 per person. $500,000 for the entire accident. That's the most for liability in this case. And $50,000 per accident is the property damage. Okay. Um, and so that's, that's important. This person also has unlimited, uh, sorry, uninsured motorist coverage, which is very, very smart. And it's 250, 500. So again, it's a very, very high coverage. So if they did get hit by someone who had a minimum amount, which like I said, in New York, it's 2550. This is 250, 500, much higher. Then there will be coverage if the damage to them, their bodily injury is much higher than, than the minimum. Medical payments are usually stated in the amount per person. Um, and then of course, in this case, they have a collision coverage and they have comprehensive. What they have, is for the collision, they have a deductible. The deductible of $1,000 means if they do have a collision with the car and there's damage to the car that needs to be fixed, the deductible is the amount of money they have to pay first before the insurance company pays the rest. So if a $2,000 if $2, of damage occurred uh, on, a, on an accident with the Camry, then the owners are responsible for the first thousand dollars. That's their deductible. The insurance company is responsible for the second thousand dollars. That's how it would be split. Um, collision and comprehensive will have deductibles. Comprehensive is a very low deductible, a hundred bucks. So anything that happens with your, you know, every state's a little bit different with glass coverage. Uh, but glass coverage is usually under comprehensive. So if you get a crack or you need your window windshield replaced, it's really the comprehensive part of the policy that helps you cover that. Again, you can't have a cracked windshield and get an inspection sticker. Before you actually get an inspection sticker for your car, they can't give you an inspection sticker without you first replacing the windshield. And windshields are expensive. And crack windshields happen all the time. Uh, could start off as a little nick uh, in the glass, and then it starts to increase over time, and it just keeps growing. Uh, but just to know, you're not going to get a new inspection sticker on that car. It's not going to pass inspection um, unless the windshield is fixed. Uh, comprehensive will cover all of that. Okay, so that's important to sort of understand. Uh, again. The usage of the vehicle is is lim is put on here. So this is uh, this person drives to school. So this is a uh, this is the female. Uh, so this is Mel Melinda in this case. Um, she's been driving 24 years, uh, and again, it looks like she hasn't had an accident in a while. So they give her a good driver discount. Good driver discounts are usually given to people who've you know they have this this record three, five, seven years period where there's no accidents. No accidents, at least no accidents that have been reported to the insurance company, because that's all they care about. Um, and so in this case, you can get a discount, a reduction. You can also get a reduction by taking a um, you know, defensive driver. Uh, I, I do that every three years. You, you take a defensive driver course. They're usually about 20, 30 bucks. 
um, to take the course, but they're good for three years. And the discount, at least my discount, I spent $30 on the course. I think I ended up saving at least $300 over the three year period of time. So in terms of, you know, bang for the buck, it's, it's good. Um, but anything, you know, the, and the purpose of that, of taking a safe driver course or a defensive driver course is they want you to be a safer driver because if you're a safer driver, your risk goes down of getting into an accident. And if your risk goes down, they're gonna they're gonna save money, so they just pass that savings on to you with a with a discount. Uh, the second vehicle here, it looks like we have a question. Um, you can find out uh, there's a whole bunch of of uh, authorized uh, folks that actually have that particular course, Adam, and. Um, uh, and we could take we could take a look at it. At, it's if you go to the DMV website, uh, defensive driving uh, classes. They have a list of all the companies that um, that are allowed to do that in New York. Every state regulates it differently. So in New York, uh, there are cer certain uh, companies that do that. Okay. Triple A. Yes. Oh, no charge. Okay. Well, that's that's really wonderful. Um, most of them do have a charge of some sort. Okay. Um, I took the, uh, and again, you have, you have some choices, you have some choices, but that's good, but it's well, I think it's well worth it. It helps you save some money. Again, it's a, it's good for three years and it reduces, um, your premium because it's, you're considered less risky. Let's look at the second vehicle. Uh, second vehicle has the same, uh, liability coverage, 250, 550. So again, $250,000 per person for bodily injury, $500,000 for everyone who's involved in the accident for bodily injury, $50,000 per accident for property damage. So for the vehicles itself. Uninsured motor, again, 250, 500, very smart. Medical payments, uh, 5,000 per person. But here, look at their collision. Look at this, $2,500 deductible. Uh, so any any type of accident that that occurs, you could be you could bump one of those curbs in 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 or poles in in a parking lot, you know, at, at the Best Buy or whatever, uh, backing up, and it caused damages. If you go to a body shop and they say oh, it'll cost you a thousand dollars to repair it, your deductible is two thousand five hundred dollars. You're paying the whole thing, paying the whole thing. I wouldn't even report it at that point um because you're paying the exact whole thing but if you do get i mean if you really if your car gets totaled you know well then this this will talk. but again a higher deductible means a lower price a lower premium but that means you're you're assuming a lot of the risk you're getting the lower price because there's less risk for the insurance company so you know don't look at it as a price how much risk are you willing to assume it should be the question if you're not willing to assume this much risk, if you get into an accident, lower your deductible to a point where you are comfortable assuming that. Uh, comprehensive for this is a $500 deductible. As you saw, it's much higher than the deductibles on, on the other car. Uh, this is a pleasure vehicle. Now that, might, that matters because if you're not driving uh, that much per year, you're considered a low mileage discount. So again, if you're not driving a lot, you're much less risky. There's less risk that you're going to an accident because you're not driving very much. So here uh, in Arizona, it's less than 7,500 miles per year. They're gonna. This person should get a discount for for low mileage, and that might already be reflecting here. Um, I think in most states it is under. They all, you know, again, it's an insurance regulated by the state. So if you're driving less than uh, 10,000 miles per year. Certainly, seventy-five hundred miles per year is very low. Uh, you want to inquire if you if you qualify for a low mileage discount, okay? Uh, because there are discounts that are available if you're not uh, if 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 you don't use your car very often, okay? It's cheaper. It's cheaper. So you know this is what a, a what are the policies look like. Uh, let me go ahead and and take you to um, another screen. We take you to the internet. Uh, I think I have it here. Okay. Um, 
couple of things. There's there's some hot vehicles. In other words, stolen vehicles. If you own one of these uh, vehicles, then it's, you know, so it's just more likely your car is stolen. Oftentimes, the, the most, the, the ones that are stolen the most are the ones that are the biggest sellers in, in the United States. So the Honda Civic is number one. And this is for 2018, most stolen vehicles in the country. Uh, the Honda Civic is the number one spot because simply it's the it's one of the best selling cars in the country. There are literally millions of Civics out there, um, and so clearly this even if a small percentage of civ Civics are stolen, it's going to be a big number. <laughs> so in this case, it's a big number. Uh, thirty over thirty eight thousand Honda Civics were stolen in twenty eighteen. Uh, well. That makes sense because there's a lot of Honda Civics. There's also a lot of Honda Accords. There's a lot of Ford pickups on the road, and so again, th this is the most. You know, the the most. These are the cars that are stolen the most: Toyota Camry, Toyota Corolla. Uh, these are very very popular cars, and so you would expect uh, that they would be on the list of most stolen vehicles. Um, but in terms of you know the the top ten models um, that were stolen in 2018, um, a lot of pickups were were stolen. I don't know, these are disgruntled uh, employees that you that they have. I'm not sure. Uh, a lot of pickups were stolen. Um, you know the Dodge Charger, uh, Malibu. These are more sporty types of cars. Uh, I don't know why anyone would want to steal a, an Electra, an Elantra from a Hyundai Elantra, God knows. Um, and then of course there are, you know, th there are warning devices and other types of things that you can do to lower the risk of that. Uh, let me go ahead and look at the um, EMV uh, defensive driving course. Um, and let me just make it uh, New York, just to make sure. Um, so here, the DMV website here, uh, sorry, um, dmv.newyork.gov, they have um, the approved courses that, that are listed here. So these are all the providers and their websites. And there's, there's quite a few there and, um, Here's the A, triple A that Arden uh, had done. Um, but, you know, again, in, in these courses, you actually have a choice. You can actually pick the course that you just simply sit and read. Um, it's six hours, I think. It's six hours, I believe, if I remember. And uh, I, I prefer to, to buy the, the video course. So you can watch some of this stuff in action. They play little big nets, they do other types of things. Uh, just because if I'm going to sit down, you know, for a six hour period of time over many days, uh, I don't want to just sit in front of the computer and read something I want, you know, video as well. So I do choose that type of thing. But this is the, um, this is the site you can go to for the approved courses in the state of New York. Okay. And that was to address um, Adam's question specifically. Um, but that's that's here as well. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna stop that and come back to our main um, screen to ask if there's any remaining uh, questions.